Hey guys, today we're working on the uh, Xbox Series S, which beeps on and set off immediately. We will be using the Xbox Pi Pico UR2 to get the arrow code out of the console. Since the last tool update, we have now got Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X RAM test, so it will tell you exactly which RAM chip is faulty. And additionally, a uh, bad SSD, bad Ethernet chip or bad power rail will be auto-detected and it will tell you on the postcard monitor tool what components to check and replace. Big thank you to TaxUser for coding and making this possible. All you need to diagnose your console is this $5 microcontroller. Press and hold the boot select button here. Y plug it into the PC. And you will see this window appear. Download the latest Pico firmware from the first link below by clicking this button. Unzip it and drop the UF2 file into this folder. The Pico will now disconnect and the Pico set up. You just download the counterpart for the PC now from the second link. We need for Windows, I need this one, unzip and run it. It will ask you to update, so synchronize all the database codes to your PC and we click yes. We are ready to connect to a console now and read the error codes. Let's take it apart. I found huge amounts of corrosion on this board, so I first cleaned it all up with IPA and then re-soldered all the components that were corroded with fresh solder, or even replaced them with bigger parts from an Xbox One S board. We will use the UR2 now to find all the components that were actually faulty and are not just fixed by re-soldering. I have got the diagram here on how to connect on all the console's models, and here the Xbox Series S, you just solder three wires like seen here from the Pico to the console. Make sure to disconnect the Pico from the PC while soldering the wires or the Pico will get damaged. On the tool I select the console model now. We reconnect the Pico, refresh the ports, now we see COM3 here, that's the Pico, and press connect. You see the Pico firmware here, that means it's connected. As soon as we plug power into the console now, we will get codes. We have got codes, let's unplug the console again. So, what we are looking at here is E046. This means that the GFX CPU controller did not respond through I2C. We have to check resistors and capacitor, and if we can find a fault, we have to replace U57. For Series SV2, component identification. Mr. Bridger has provided us pictures in the Discord here. So we have to check these two resistors, this resistor and the capacitor that is on the back side. Okay, let's check our resistors. I put my multimeter in continuity mode. Okay, let's start here. Two ohm resistor. Yes, it's okay. We have a zero ohm here. And we have a weight. It's missing of the board. Oh, looks like I wiped that off when I was resoldering components. Okay, we will connect again. Don't forget to give the console power. Now we've got a new error code, or actually two, E006 and E091. So this is a low priority error code, it says here. So we will look at this one instead. So VGFX core power rail error. So the GFX core power rail doesn't start up. Um, we are supposed to check two voltages on this resistor, two voltages on this resistor, and then move on accordingly and replace these chips if uh, still the GFX core doesn't start up or is not working. Okay, looking at the component identification pictures, we have to look at R252 and R253, which are these two. So I measure voltage on both sides. Okay, so these two resistors are the resistors in question, this one and this one. And I think what might be going on is that this one is not connected to this VIA anymore because of corrosion, yeah? 
So we can check that real quick. Okay, so I will enable standby power to the console now while measuring the voltage on this resistor. And we have got nothing. Yeah. So that's why we are also not getting anything on the other side where we need 0 0.7 volt, yeah? No 0 0.7 volt available. Let's install a tiny jumper wire for the 12 volt here. Just to prove the point, let's measure the voltages now. So we had been measuring on this resistor right here earlier. 12 volt, good. And the other side of the resistor here, 0 0.75 we need. Yes, very nice. Okay, I will reconnect again. COM3, connect, good. Let's power on again. Okay, we have an interesting situation going on here. So we are getting CCO2, bank D, RAM failure. And then we are getting 0007, APU shutdown. But this is again a low priority error, so we will focus on this one first. In the Discord we have got a sheet for Series X and Series S. Discord is linked below, by the way. So bank D is this chip. Let's check around this chip if we find anything wrong. Otherwise, like the error says, we will have to replace or reball bank D or reball the APU. I was looking at the bank D RAM chip. Yeah, it's this big chip here. And look what I found. So someone has slipped with a screwdriver here. So maybe that's our problem. I will zoom in there. We will create a small jumper for that by scratching the trays on both sides. Good, small jump has been installed. Let's check what error we get now. <laughs> it's time to connect yet again. Power on. It ran into an error there one time. But we're getting CPU and SP boot success. Try to boot the console. But now again, as with miss, it shut down. Hmm. The error we are looking at here is when SVID communication fails between U57 and APU, we have to check a few resistors and replace U57. This could be a bad APU. I don't like this error. Okay, so I have found something here in this big row of zero ohm resistors here. Yeah? Zero ohm, zero ohm, zero ohm. This one is not reading zero ohm. This one is this worst. So this one has gone open circuit, I think. I can't get a value in it. Let's measure it in resistance mode. 4.1 million ohm. And this resistor is supposed to be a zero ohm resistor. It's actually one of the ones that was mentioned in the um, error code. So that's how I found it. When I tried to solder it, it just moved off its pad, so this resistor is definitely bad. So we have replaced this resistor also with a uh, 0 ohm. Yes, no error. 
Let's try to boot it from the power button now. We have to hold it up a bit so it doesn't overheat, but console staying on. Let's reassemble the console and give it a final test. Here we go, console is reassembled. Give it power. Let's power on. There we go. Let's see. Nice. There we are, I connect a controller and we are able to launch fine. I will test the game now and report back. The tool managed to point us into all the right directions and tell us exactly which component was faulty. Console is working 100% fine. Like and subscribe if you liked the video and see you in the next one. Bye.